My goodness, this year is racing away from us. Already in the sixth release of this year, halfway now, and this release is a really good one. We have new stuff relating to the automation editor, UI improvements and features, new entity types, performance upgrades, and of course, new integrations. First up, however, it would be a crime for me not to talk about the feature that I've wanted for so, so long. So long, in fact, it's been in my predictions video for the last two years running, and it's probably one of, if not the most requested feature I've ever seen. It's finally here, everyone. Network storage in Home Assistant. What a glorious day. That's right, as of this release, you can now configure a network share inside of Home Assistant, which can be used for either media storage to play back your own media from Manas, or I think it could also be used for storing media generated by Home Assistant 2, such as with Frigate, though I haven't tried that yet, so just a guess. Or you can use it as a backup location when you are taking backups inside of Home Assistant 2, meaning the backups aren't stored directly on your Home Assistant, which is excellent news. Network storage can be configured in the storage menu under system and can be either a SIFS SMB type or it also supports NFS too. When you create a share, you can define its purpose and you can add multiple shares that are for different functions, which is excellent. And if you create a backup share, you can select that share to be the default location for backups. So they just auto magically go there rather than to the local storage. And this is really the last piece of the puzzle to automating backups natively that are stored in another location without having to use a community add-on. And I think that deserves a nice. Next up, we have a couple of UI changes, starting with the integrations page, which gets a cleanup and overhaul in this release. Now, don't worry, don't worry, before you get the pitchforks out, it's still in the same location, they haven't moved it, but they've given the page some tweaks for consistency reasons, along with introduced a new panel. Previously, when you opened the integrations page, you'd see quite a few different inconsistencies between integrations, with subtle differences depending on how many devices you had. But now in 2023.6, everything has a consistent experience in the layout and how devices are displayed. They've also made it easier to see if an integration has a cloud dependency or is a custom integration, and each integration now has a settings button that will take you to a new panel for that integration, showing the debug, known issues and documentation options, along with configuration options, meaning that they are all in this one place now, and that keeps the main integration page much cleaner. And if an integration has an error, then that will also be shown on this page now too. The inconsistency of that page was always a little off to me, especially with things like ESP home devices, so really cool to see that it's cleaned up. Now, another UI update in this release also is the light dialogue on your dashboard. A couple of releases ago, we saw more radical change of the more info dialogue for some entities, and this release expands on that for lights by adding new controls for color and temperature along with favorites, allowing you to quickly change the color or temperature to a preset option. These presets can be edited and rearranged, drag and drop confirmed, by clicking and holding one of the presets. While we're in here actually, another subtle change is that entities that have the new More Info dialog now has the last change time displayed on them, which you can click to change the format, nice. And if we then head over to the related menu inside of any device, that has also improved too, going from an unordered bullet point list to a more structured and consistent layout. Automations just got easier too, with the addition of cut, copy and paste inside of the UI, which makes it easier than ever to reuse parts of automations when creating new ones. Maybe you have an automation for one motion light in one room, where you have a condition of the sun being below a certain level, and you want to reuse that condition to create automations for the rest of your rooms, now you can simply hit copy on that condition and start creating new automations, pasting that condition in. Or maybe you create an action that's inside of the wrong choose action and you want to move it to another choose action, you can now cut and paste that easily. Super cool new addition. And while we're talking about the automation editor too, it also got a nice little bump as it only shows options that are applicable and actually available to the selected devices rather than showing every option. Z-Wave also sees some nice additions this release too, 
Unfortunately, I don't have Z-Wave set up right now to show anything, but there is a nice list of improvements, including improved support for window coverings, which adds tilt devices as blinds now, improved support for energy generation devices, no statistics for easier troubleshooting, as well as various other minor fixes, all of which brings the Z-Wave JS integration up to the platinum level, which is the highest available. Pretty cool. Next up, we have some continued performance improvements, mostly because Python 3.11 is now in this release and is now the default for Home Assistant, which in itself brings about a lot of speed improvements compared to the previous 3.10. There's also been other improvements to the SQLite database, meaning history stats, logbook, and other database items should be even faster. And both of these should help to reduce the resources that your Home Assistant server uses, which sounds pretty good all around. Finally, we see three new entity types in this release, which are date, time, and date time, allowing integrations to provide dedicated date time sensors, which has always been a little bit tricky in Home Assistant, usually requiring you to use templates in order to get something similar. As for the little things this month, firstly, the Android TV integration that was added a couple of releases ago, or maybe it was the last release, now has a media player entity now too, alongside of the remote, which should be a more reliable way of using Android TV over the older ADB method. Matter now supports tilt covers too. The Roborock integration, which was also introduced in the previous release, has had a bunch of new entities in this one. KNX allows you to upload a project file with a new diagnostics method, and the Samsung integration also now has a remote entity for sending keys directly to the TV. Cool. As for new integrations this month, we have six new integrations available to use, including the Google AI conversation agent for using with voice pipelines, the YouTube integration, if you want to track yours truly in your home assistant, why wouldn't you want to do that? And support for JVC projectors. We also get three new integrations available to set up in the UI now too, instead of YAML. As for breaking changes this month, nothing major jumping out except from the Python one. Because the Python version was upgraded in this release, like I talked about a minute ago, this does have a breaking change here. However, this only affects you if you are running the Home Assistant core installation type, which according to the analytics is a very, very small number of you. If you are running Home Assistant OS, Home Assistant Supervised or Home Assistant Container, you don't need to worry about this as the upgrade to Python 3.11 is taking care automatically for you. The only thing you might need to be aware of is that this could affect some custom integrations if they have not been updated for a while. So make sure to have those fully updated and check for any breaking changes first before updating Home Assistant and then make sure to have a read of the rest of the breaking changes to make sure nothing else affects you. And that's about it for this release. This was a bigger release this month, which of course we love to see. Personally, I am so happy to see the inclusion of network storage. That is a huge feature and excited to start using that. I can't believe they finally did it and it works really well. I imagine that one is also gonna be a popular one with a lot of you and you're gonna be really happy about that one but do let me know your favorite new thing down in the comments. The copy paste one for automations is actually really cool too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and get subscribed and I will see you in the next.